What you're witnessing is a high stakes procedure, heart surgery on a compromised valve that's put the patient's life in danger. The disease that's being treated is called aortic stenosis. It's basically the main valve that exists from the heart, which becomes, after a process of wear and tear over decades, becomes calcified. Well, the frequency of this disease is quite common. If all goes according to plan, the patient will be back on her feet within a matter of days. With no fewer than 12 people in the operating room, the procedure is an exercise in teamwork and state-of-the-art medical technology. It works really well in an in you know, institute like ours where we have a lot of people that work together as a, an efficient team. The surgery, known as a transcatheter aortic valve implantation, or TAVI for short, has come a long way over the years. But like any surgery, it's not without risk. The patient, Bernice Kranz, says her condition has been deteriorating. The night before the surgery, her family paid her a visit. Very nervous. I'm nervous, yeah. yeah. The breathing is really bad. Has gotten bad this last a couple okay. weeks or more. Gotten a lot worse, yeah. yeah. So, so I hope this helps. Morning of the surgery, the team of doctors and specialists take meticulous care in their preparation for the TAVI operation. The team is led by Dr. Marino Labanez and Dr. Mark Ruel, who performed some of the first operations of this kind in the world using this technology. TAVI is an acronym for transcatheter aortic valve implantation. So transcatheter means that we're using a tube. Aortic means the valve that we're putting in, and implantation means that we're putting it in the, uh, in the human body. Ultimately, the valve that the patient had is not removed, and that's one key aspect of TAVI. Functionally, it is a replacement, because you have a new valve that's taking over the one that's now kept in the open position. But anatomically, it is an implant. It's not replacing. Mrs. Kranz is nervous, but resolute. Ready to go? Get you into the room, get you settled, okay? They put her in conscious sedation and begin the first steps of the procedure. First is one that's somewhat underappreciated, is getting into the uh, artery of the leg. As Dr. Ruel will remember in the early days, uh, the tubes that we used were very large and a lot of complications arose from that. So at the very beginning of the procedure, it looks very simple. You know, we're taking a picture, we're using ultrasound, we're identifying the perfect spot to enter the artery so that our large catheter doesn't destroy the artery and cause serious complications. The next challenge is guiding the new valve into the heart while it's still beating, using guidance from x-ray and echocardiography. Prior to the advent of this technology, Mrs. Kranz would have been looking at open heart surgery. Mrs. Kranz would have had surgery on one or two valves, uh, probably performed through a midline incision, uh, through the breastbone, uh, risk of a major complication, therefore stroke. Uh, with what she had today, numbers would suggest that she's probably about half that risk. With the sheath in place, the team inflates the delivery system balloon and places a new valve in Mrs. Kranz's heart. One, two, three, four, five. Put them down. It goes off without a hitch. The device works properly, and the doctors remove the sheath and complete the surgery. Exceptionally well. I mean, it went better than we would have anticipated. You know, she was uh, uh, not uh, put on a ventilator, and um, you know, every part of it went as well as it could. I was really pleased here. You can see the coronaries totally clear. Yeah, so there's a sheath going up. Again, no resistance as it's, you know, going up the aorta. Pacemaker was in a good position. Up next for Mrs. Kranz is a period of recovery, something that prior to Tavi would have been daunting. Bonjour, hello. Just two months ago, Jacques Marinier had the very same procedure. La chorale, la résidence I had the procedure uh, in the afternoon. In the evening, I was having a chicken sandwich. The next morning, 
I, they asked me if I would take a few steps. I said yes, but they insisted that I would use a walker because I didn't feel like I needed one. <laughs> and I walked uh, 80 steps. The next day, I was walking around the ward. He was shocked at how quickly he was back on his feet. I expected it would take a little bit longer because I didn't have virtually any, any pain at all. So if I can be in the hospital for four days instead of uh, two weeks, uh, and then the recovery is much, much faster, that means that I don't need to cost the government money. <laughs> Back at the hospital, Mrs. Kranz is on the path to recovery with her family by her side. I, I was surprised, really, that I could get up and have my lunch. And, well, I, did, I didn't figure it would be this good today, really. It's a profound change from just a decade ago, thanks to the development of the TAVI medical device and the doctors who've pioneered this new approach. We believed in this technology, and obviously many, many other people did as well. And now, you know, what we have in front of our eyes is a very finished product uh, that uh, looks quite uh, streamlined and easy. But there, there's, been, there's been a learning curve and there's been technological evolution that led to this for sure. A medical device that's changing the lives of Canadians. There still is an educational piece around it. Like, obviously, primary care physicians need to know about the avail availability of this. If they hear a heart murmur, then there is th this TAVI solution potentially available. Mm -hmm.